In this tutorial, I will set up the basic physics for a mini game. Uh, here we have an already set up paddle and a ball, and what we want to do is make them interact with each other. So the first thing we need to do is select the root node of the scene, or at least a node that contains all of the nodes that you wish to apply physics to, uh, and add the physics world component to it. Uh, this will make it simulate physics for all of its child nodes. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the ball and I'm going to uh, apply the physics to it. And the way we do this is by uh, giving it a physics body uh, component. Since this is a sphere, I will add a physics sphere body, which also includes a sphere collider. Uh, at this point, it would be very helpful to uh, enable colliders. So you can go to preview debug and show physics colliders. Uh, at this point, I do need to reload the scene. And now the collider is going to be in, entirely inside of the object for now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase uh, it's the radius of the collider. So let's say 2. And now you can see it because it is basically exactly the size of the object. Because the ball is at size, uh, at scale 2. And now as you can see, it is completely clipping through this uh, paddle. Uh, that is because it, it doesn't have a physics body attached to it so that it can interact with the ball. Uh, for now, I will just completely ignore these and we will set them up as we get along, uh, get to them. Uh, Pedal uh, has uh, multiple objects and uh, the simplest way to create a collider for the paddle is to create a new game object uh, or a new node. Uh, and I will name it Paddle Collider. Uh, now we can see in the editor where this object is once we select it and I would like to align it with the paddle so I'm just going to drag it here and a little bit up uh, I did put it underneath the paddle for now uh, because I will be making uh, the collider is slightly, slightly thicker than the paddle. Uh, so this is an irregular shape, but we can approximate it with a box. So let's make it five thick and let's have a look at how that looks. You will see that now that this is not quite as thick as the paddle, so we can increase this a little bit. <coughs> we also want to give it obviously some length. Uh, this does extend a little bit uh, further than the paddle, uh, but that's okay. Uh, typically, this, this is not going to be very visible. Uh, you can uh, select or and unselect anything to restart, essentially. But now you see that it is also falling. So what we need to do is uh, make it static. And this will make it stand in one place. Uh, and this should in theory, interact with the ball if they touch, but they are not quite aligned. So I will have to align myself with it. There we go. Now these are interacting, uh, but it's not very game-like at this point in time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the colliders and we're going to arrange them, uh, adjust them a little bit to make them behave in the ways we want them to behave. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to fix the ball's Z position because once I hit it, I don't want it to go forward or backwards because that makes it uh, way harder to control. Another thing I want to do is I want to increase its mass. And I want to increase its mass quite a lot, I think, uh, because it's quite slow. So let's say something like this. Uh, I will be wanting to give it a bit of restitution. and This will make it bounce nicer, I believe. Maybe more. Um, on the physics world itself, we can increase the gravity. Uh, this will again make things move a little bit faster. That's quite a bit faster. And now we want to increase the cinematic no knockback factor to make it once again bounce nicer. And as I promised, we will want to make the paddle collider thicker. And this is why. Because when I move my uh, head very quickly, we cannot uh, 
determine that the ball which was here one frame and here the next frame collided with the paddle. We don't have a velocity, we just uh, place it frame by frame. So the way we can compensate for that is by making the colliders thicker. And let me just uh, align them a little bit better. There we go. Let me restart that. And this should now respond better to quick movements. The last thing we want to address uh, is another interaction of static objects being tied to moving objects such as the face, and that is that sometimes when they disappear and reappear, they will not behave correctly. So uh, let me see if I can quickly try to reproduce this. Like that. Uh, so there's an easy way to fix this, and all you need to do is select the parent object uh, that is also tied to the face. Uh, and add a component. Uh, this is the disable child nodes component. And we want to disable the child nodes while face is invisible, and then enable it again when the face becomes visible. Uh, so this will now fix this issue. And ne the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to um, make a script that will restart the ball uh, when it drops or when a face is lost. Uh, so we will do this in part two.